the Cultural Loyalty Bill, which allows the Culture Ministry to deny funding to cultural works that, according to the government, disrespect state symbols considered Independence Day to be a day of mourning or incite to violence or terrorism, among, among other things. The coalition pulled the bill from uh, coming to a vote after a majority was out of reach. Culture and Sports Minister Miri Regev blamed her coalition partners for the fail. Finance Minister Kahlon has chosen again and again to flee from responsibility and not exercise his authority to deny funding to these cultural institutions. In other words, he's allowing the continuation of financing of plays, movies, events, which extol terrorists. His decision, Kahlon's decision, to give a free vote to members of his faction, who he knows very well are divided in their opinions, in effect is an attempt to bring down this government. Aaron, why does any country need a bill like the culture loyalty bill? Not any country, I think specifically Israel, given that there are so many uh, elements that are anti-Israel, the BDS movement specifically, that is trying to not just boycott Israel, but delegitimize the Jewish state, attempt to destroy uh, the legitimacy of and ultimately the actual state, given that they also uh, sort of push enemies of Israel. So why should the Israeli government, in its right mind, fund uh, uh, movies, whatever it is, television programs, uh, the art? that push either the boycott of Israel, the delegitimization of Israel, support for terror. We talk about Independence Day, specifically it's promoting the false Nakba mm. uh, narrative that the Palestinians have pushed for decades. Okay. Uh, why should Israel pay for that? Why is that controversial? I mean, yeah, worry, That's not they're, censorship. They're not, they're not banning those works. They're saying just not from our purse, not yeah, from so the Israeli taxpayer so, money. Miri Regev is not Israel. Miri Regev is a uh, minister, she was an elected, a politician. She's an elected official. She's a politician with a very specific... Uh, uh, set of ideology. We're not in a Stalin-run uh, state. Miri Regev believes that she's Stalin, that she can say what's uh, Israeli and what's not uh, anti-Israeli. She doesn't have the skills to but do something like that for this right in, a, now. It's in, in a democratic country. The, the politicians should not determine what is art and what art and, and freedom of speech is much more important than the platform, the primary elections of, wanna, Ms, of uh, Mrs. Uh, before, uh, Regev. Before I go to you, Aaron, before you respond, I want to show you what a group of uh, Israeli artists put together uh, in response to this cultural loyalty bill. Let's take a look. Everyone understands art differently. And that's the beauty of it. To let a politician, the minister of culture, from the left or the right, to interpret what's incitement, what hurts Judaism, what hurts democracy, it's a bit ridiculous. It's definitely not serious. But this is what's going to happen if the culture loyalty bill is passed. And that's not funny. That's scary. That's scary, they say. Can you understand even a bit that... <laughs> you know, come fear? on, this is a propaganda clip right there. Um, no, I can't understand that fear. It, let let uh, the same people go into the Palestinian Authority or the rest of the Middle East and they'll see Since actual when censorship. The PA this is not censorship. Our, our comparison. What are you talking about? The PA is a, uh, um, a minor organization that runs a few okay, cities. It's a, we're, our our how aspiration is, how is, is to censorship? be part of the democratic. How? How world, is it not of the Arab world, For like Miri Regev is trying to put us there, by the way. The Israeli in, government in, in, in is the democratic a values, decision right? that they simply don't want to finance uh, arts that either boycott Israel or attempt to delegitimize the Jewish state. How is you know, that censorship? Today, in her in her uh, 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 in press the, conference, uh, press conference, she said she talked about the new Israel Fund, who doesn't have anything to do with it. This is a liar. Someone whose uh, lies are well known. She doesn't know. Maybe she wants to be. You know, she wants to. to this is not the about Miriam Regev. Right. It's about a bill. She wants to bring similar similar values, like Chad runs its own government, Miri Egev wants to uh, import here to Israel. We are vote. not, we are got, not going to be like that. And it's good that this uh, legislation uh, didn't They're pass. They're voting right now in the Knesset. It's called democracy. She, she set democracy forth a bill, not and the Knesset will vote on whether vote it is democratic or not. Is this situation with that razor thin majority, is that a sustainable uh, situation? I mean, they're just going to pull back everything, everything they want to legislate. It's not sustainable, is it? 
And not only that, but I mean, I really feel bad for the Israeli public on both the right and the left that this is what we have. Politicians right now who are not voting on a bill. They're not voting on legislation. Right. They're voting based on some larger uh, political game. Mm. And they're doing it openly, by the way, both the right. right and the left in this I wanna, case. I want to move on to our last topic. Speculation in Israel is growing over the possibility of a political unification move for the center-left camp. Former Prime Minister Ehud Barak has reportedly met separately with opposition leader Tsipi Livni and former Defense Minister Moshe Bogi Yalon. Barak is now one of Prime Minister Netanyahu's most vocal critics, especially on social media, like this Facebook post, where he says he is responsible for the deter deterioration of the state into a depression that requires getting him out of office as soon as possible. He understands that the end is near, the end of his government, and the collapse of his public moral authority. The suspect from Balfour is afraid, afraid. Uh, Aaron, is, is Barack the only man who can beat Netanyahu? I don't think Barack can necessarily beat Netanyahu. And speaking of feeling sorry for Israelis, I also sort of feel sorry that it's just the same recycled leadership over and over again. Although in, in America, we do have Hillary Clinton perpetually trying to run. <laughs> um, but, you know, Barack here, um, the, the Israeli populace, I think, right now is not in the mood for a left-wing government, although we'll see. But running simply on an anti-Netanyahu uh, proposal very anti, very anti and, and not with you. new um, policy is uh, troubling. Uh, before we go to, to, to Uri, I want to show you another thing of what he believes a prime minister, prime minister should basically not be interested in. Let's take a look. I think it's time to return to normalcy. Israel deserves a prime minister that says, I don't want the airplane, I don't want the castle, I don't want the platters, I don't want the checks. If I'd like to go to a chef restaurant, I will take out my own wallet and I will pay. I don't want patio furniture. I don't want my pool water replaced. I don't want an electrician on Yom Kippur. I don't want any of these things. I want to serve the citizens. Is Barack the, the, the left's comeback kid, Uri? He might be. I mean, Israel has a long tradition of uh, coming comeback kids. Yeah. I mean, Netanyahu himself was prime minister in 96, sure. was re-elected in 2009. In, in, uh, uh, El Barak has few uh, qualities that might uh, fit this uh, comeback. Uh, first, uh, he's, you know, the, the most decorated uh, soldier in Israel's history. He was the chief of staff of the military. Uh, he, he, um, he, uh, uh, he won. He beat Netanyahu um, right. in, in 99 in an overwhelming lost. majority. That's true. <laughs> um, to, to Sharon, not to Netanyahu. Um, he, uh, he, wa he was the commander of Netanyahu in the, uh, right. in the unit. In, so he's in got the a commando. great record. He has a good record. Uh, he's bearded. You know, it's about time that Israel has a bearded uh, prime minister. I, I'm all for it. Uh -huh. um, and, and look, he's definitely one of the most... Um, I would say. What about um, what about, what about uh, former IDF chief of staff uh, Gantz, who, according to some of the polls, might if he joins, like they say, the Zionist Union, he he, he bumps them up. It doesn't necessarily they'll take anything from the right wing block. I mean, the right wing block seems to pretty much stay solid. Nothing's not, really not, changing. Not, not necessarily. Mm. Although I, I would say, as a potential, I don't know, voter, I would love to hear what he has to say. I mean. Unlike Barack, who very you know tweets almost like uh, Trump, you don't hear anything from uh, Gantz. He might be, uh, you know, he was chief of staff. He's um, you right. know very presidential looking, um, perhaps. What you? Yeah, I mean, I think Benny Gantz could be a very serious contender for the center left. Um, but as you just said, it doesn't change much of the dynamic on the right. And the next government, I think, according to all polls, are going to be right wing. You know, but Ehud Barak, you talk about his military career, and he has a fantastic military career, but he also withdrew Israel from Lebanon, which ultimately which resulted... Anyway, can't you? Yeah, you can, you can spin that great. either way, but right now you have Hezbollah... Uh, yeah, Rock, before. yeah, but you have Hezbollah on steroids and Iran uh, planting military bases throughout But you had Lebanon. hundreds of Israeli soldiers dead. No uh, casualties uh, in, but in the you last have, 18 years. Yeah, but I mean, now you part, have an Iranian an military base toward Israel's mm -hmm. north, which is the largest existential threat to the Jewish state and something that the next prime minister, whether Barack or Netanyahu, is going to have to contend with.